Okay, hey guys, welcome again. Um, we are finishing up le lesson 7, 6, and a little bit of 7, 7, and I believe we'll be done with solving our equations um, today. And assignment 6 for the week's right here. It's the last section and a few, only two problems on the new section. All right? Okay, so today what we're dealing with is instead of sine of x, this will be 2x. Okay, and we'll see what changes that implies. So let's go ahead and start on this one. I'm going to get sine of 2x alone. I'm going to minus the 5. I'll give you negative 1 divided by 2. That's negative 1 half. Normally I'd go right over here, which we'll do in a minute, but I want to explain some things here. Since I have sine of 2x, that's the difference right now. Remember that 2 is in the x change. It's part of the sine function. You can't like divide it away. Okay, that means it's an x change. That means it's a lie. Instead of twice as long, or twice as wide, excuse me, it made it half as wide. So if you come down here, this is the graph of sine of x, which is what we're normally doing, okay? And we want it to equal negative one half, and those are 30 degree angles, and there are two places. Remember, sine is negative when it's down, and that would be, and they are 30, so that would be 210 degrees and 330 degrees right there. And those would be within our range of zero to 360. That would be our normal one that we did last week. Okay, but now with sine of two x, we shrunk it to be half as wide, so instead of finishing at 360, the whole revolution finishes at 180 and another one fits before we get to 360. So now there's twice as much graph squished together like an accordion. I have more answers that equal the negative one half. Negative one half would be like down here, and they, these are like kind of our two regular ones that were squished over, and there are two more now. Okay, so that's going to result in more answers on this particular problem. Okay, so what we're going to do to accomplish that or to handle that is the same thing for all problems. When we get our answers, I'll get those, and we're going to add the period repeatedly until we're out of range, and our range is from 0 to 360. So any answers that lie along that, sorry, after that are no good. Over here, if you recall, the period is either 2 pi over b or 360 over b, depending if we're working in radians or degrees. So let's come back and do our problem now. All right. We're in degrees, so let's find our period. Period is 360 degrees over B. B is the number for the X, which is two. That's 180 degrees. As I showed you earlier, the period was 360, but now that we've changed it, it's 180 degrees, and there's another period before we get to 360. All right, so let's, let's do our regular work here now. So I'm coming here, I get to the end, get it alone, draw your circle. I want sine to be negative. I'm kind of ignoring this right now. I want these two answers, and then I know that sine is negative one half at 30, so what I'm going to do next is to say that 2x equals these angles here, and they're 30s, so this is a 180 plus 30, 210 degrees, and the other angle is 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. Okay, and I also have to make a note here, it's super important, it has to happen right at this stage that you have to get both your angles. If you get one and then work with it later, you'll get the wrong other angle. So you have to find, like, go to your circle, find your two angles that go with it right now. I don't want to know what 2x is, I want to know what x is. You can just divide this by 2, all of them. x equals either 105 degrees or half of 330 is 150 and 15 more is 165 degrees. Okay, and then we talked about adding the period. So what I'm really going to do is write 105 degrees plus the period, which is 180 degrees. And then I have 165 degrees plus the period times n. And I have to calculate these out. I can't just leave that. I want all the answers that lie within 0 to 360. So first of all, 105 is a good answer. If I don't add if I add 180 like zero times, I have 105. That's one of our answers. 105 degrees. 105 plus 180 is going to be 295 degrees. Hopefully I'm doing my math right. Okay, if I add 180 again, see if I do this right, it, that would be 300 plus 3, 480, so it would, be, it would be 475 degrees. But I want you to notice that that does not lie within the range of 0 to 360, so that one's no good. So I'm going to add them until I'm out of range. Typically, if there's a two here, it's kind of nice. I have to go twice around the circle, kind of, and I have like twice as many answers. That usually happens. All right, here comes 165. 
So 165 is another good answer. Okay, I'm going to add 180 to that. That's going to get me what? 245? I'm going to do this on here. 165 plus 180 is 345. If I add 180 again, it'll be out of the range. I also want you to note that if I add 180 one time and weigh in at 180 another time, I've added 360 to something. That would always be more than 360. So anytime I've added it twice, it's like too much. So these here are my answers. All right? Okay. Problem number two. This is 3x. That's going to allow, instead of two revolutions here, it'll allow three of them. I'll have even more answers, maybe like six answers. Okay? And we just need to not worry about that really. But add the period again until we're out of range and we'll have all the right answers there. Okay, we're going to get it alone. Minus root 3. Notice I'm in radians as well. Tangent of 3x equals negative root 3. Okay. I want tangent to be negative. It's positive here, it's negative here, and it's negative there. Tangent equals root 3. Again, you can't divide by 3 here. That's, that's going to sit there. I, this is what I'm looking for. Tangent equals root 3 at a 60. Okay, and I want the negative one, which are those two. I want 60s here. We're in radians. 60s are pi over 3s. This is 3 thirds. This will be 1 less. This is 2 pi over 3. This guy is 6 pi over 3 to make 2 pi. So 6 pi over 3, take one away. 5 pi over 3. Those are the answers we want. So in this case, 3x equals 2 pi over 3. Or... 5 pi over 3. Right. I have to divide by 3 on all these. It's the same as multiplying the bottom by 3. So my answers are 2 pi over 6. I'll reduce that. That's really just, if I cancel that, pi over 3. And I'm going to add the period. And the other one is going to be 5 pi over 6. And I have to add the period and then the main times that I can. All right? All right, my period, we didn't do it yet. 3 is the number. We're in radians. The period is 2 pi over b. The b is 3. That's my period, 2 pi over 3. Okay, so I'm going to add that here. 2 pi over 3. And 2 pi over 3, if I make a common denominator, it'll be 4 pi over 6. Okay? And we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Recall that if I'm in thirds, that would be 6 pi. If I reach that, that's too much. And over 6, it would be 12 pi over 6 would be 2 pi. That would be my limit, right? Don't forget that these are good answers here. So pi over 3, I'm going to add 2 thirds pi to that. That's 3, that's 1 pi plus 2 pi on top. That's 3 pi over 3, that makes pi. 3 pi over 3, that's what that really is. I'm adding 2 pi over 3, that'll make 5 pi over 3. Okay, if I add 2 more pi, that would be 7 pi over 3, that'd be more than 6 pi over 3, which would be 2 pi, it's out of the range. Okay, notice I got 3 answers for that. I have a 3 there, over here I have a 2, and I got 2 answers for each one. Okay, here comes the answer for this. 5 pi over 6. Oops. adding 4 more pi, that'd be 9 pi over 6. If I reduce that, that would be, was it 9 pi over 6? Sorry. Divide by 3, 3 pi over 2. I like to leave it like that kind of to see it because I'm going to add 4 more pi. If I add 4 more pi to that, that is 13 pi over 6. And if I add 4 more pi to that, that would be 17 pi over 6, which is greater than 2 pi. 12 pi or 12 over 6 would be 2. That's too much. I'm all done there. These are all of my answers. Okay? Get it alone. Go to your circle. Get your answers like you always did. Okay, but here, whatever you have here, I have to make that a single x, so I'm dividing by 3 in this case. Okay, and I just get all my answers, and I add the period repeatedly until I'm out of range, and then you'll have it. Okay, our last one here. This one's interesting because... Um, 
This is one half x. Remember that that's a x change, which is a y, so it's really twice as wide. So on this one, let's get it solved for itself. So cosecant of one half x. I'm going to minus root three and then divide by three, root three. That's going to be negative one. Okay. All right. I'm going to flip this. All right. This is cosecant. I can't work with that. Okay. So whose partner is cosecant? That's sine. Sine of one half x equals flip this over. This is negative one over one. It'll still be negative one. That's what I'm working with. Okay. I drew cosecant here. I think I was thinking of something else. Let's do this right. Okay, in this case, um, my sine graph, my regular one, goes like such, and it equals negative one down here. Okay, and this one, it's twice as wide. So instead of being at 180 and ending at 360, and go here and down there and you can see where the answer was is going to be beyond 360 it's twice as wide it pushed it out let's go ahead and solve this one and i'll show you what's going to happen here okay so and this is an odd case where sine equals negative one i only have one answer there one half x equals that angle, we're in radians, so it's like 270, but in, in radians it's 3 pi over 2. Okay, in order to get x alone, I have to multiply by 2 in this case. x equals 3, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to cancel those. It'll be 3 pi. And I would add the period, let's finish this out, even though I know there's not going to be any answers and 3 pi is already out of range. But my period for this one would be 2 pi over b. It would be 2 pi over b, which is 1 half. If I clean that up, times by 2 to cancel, it's 4 pi. If I add 4 pi, that's obviously going to be bigger than 2 pi if I add that once. 3 pi is out of range as well. So there are no good answers here on this problem. All right, thank you.